we've got some exciting news from Mars with our Perseverance rover, of course, and the Ingenuity helicopter that hitched a ride along with the rover to Mars. Now, just in case you haven't been paying attention, Perseverance is a rover, much like Curiosity, it's been delivered to the surface of Mars right here. And you can see, let me mark the position where the rover landed right here. Now, why are we so interested? Well, you can see this delta deposit from where this river flowed in to a lake. This lake was about the size of Lake Tahoe, give or take. And it's dry now, obviously, but deposits were left behind that even perhaps could have signs of life left over inside them, chemical signatures that life would leave there. Well, they've chosen a couple possible paths for Perseverance to take, maybe the blue path to get to that Delta deposit, or perhaps the purple path. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to decide. It'll, do, it'll have to do with science. Which direction has the most interesting science targets to take? And also safety. Which, which direction has the safest path to get to our main science? Meanwhile, of course, the rover itself has indeed been taking some spectacular photographs. That is the Delta deposit off in the distance that you can see there. Um, this big rock in the foreground that I'm circling with the laser pointer right now, that is a foreground rock. It's only about six feet long. That Delta deposit is much, much larger. Something about six feet long would only be maybe from there to there. So in addition to taking beautiful images with the cameras, scientists have been testing out the rover itself as well. Here's Perseverance's wheel, sort of twisting back and forth in the Martian dirt. Here, leaving some tracks behind, like we our special guest, Nagi Cox, last month, told us that she was rolling. And indeed, Percy's been leaving tracks in the dirt. Not only that, scientists have been putting together the hazard camera frames and giving us little movies to take a look at. So here she is driving around, backing up. You can see the track tires that were there. Pretty fun stuff. Um, driving around little U-turns. You can see the actual color of the dirt there. And in the upper right, that indeed is where the surface of Mars was blown clean by the rockets. And on the left-hand side, right above the rover, you can see where the rockets on the left-hand side of where she landed uh, blew the surface clear. Um, other instruments have been tested here. The robot arm is being worked out a little bit, spinning it and showing that the joints can flex. In this image, boing, um, a little canister has been opened up there so we can protect. I think it's a sample container. In addition, Perseverance has been leaving the stuff behind on the surface of Mars. I know everywhere we go, we litter. Our robots are littering. What have we come to? Well, we need to do this. This protected the belly of actually the sample gathering unit of Perseverance is on the belly side. So this protected it during landing. They popped that off and then they took, a, and then they actually also popped off the section covering the helicopter, like you can see here, the dust cover of the helicopter. So the sample protector, the belly protector went there and that whole region, now they're able to access, they're able to put in the samples they're able to interact with. And right here, is ingenuity on the belly of perseverance still and here you can see they've even chosen the airfield and the flight zone for ingenuity which was shockingly close to the rover landing location well not that surprising a nice big flat area is a good place to land big flat area is also a good place to fly and as you can see in this shot sort of a three-quarter view, the Van Zeal Outlook is the location where the rover is going to drive and watch the flight operations of the helicopter Ingenuity down below. So Perseverance will record those flights as they happen and we'll get to see some views. Right now, this is the view of that area. You can see the main takeoff zone of the helicopter. So Perseverance needs to drive there, drop off the helicopter. It'll take several days to unfold and have everything placed. But once Ingenuity is on the ground, they only have about a day to drive off or the solar panels and the batteries on Ingenuity won't do what they need to do and keep it charged. It'll die in the cold. So they're very, they need to have Perseverance roll off the top of Ingenuity to make sure those solar panels get sunlight on them before the batteries die on the helicopter. So that'll be what they do right away once the helicopter's dropped off. And here's that same view of the flight zone without the annotations. Now the helicopter itself, when it's used, it'll take off, do a little loop, come back down and land, but it'll investigate some new areas. 
Now it might be able to take off and go to a potential new landing site if everything looks good enough, but I believe the first plan is to do a safe flight up and then come back down and land in a safe location. It's not going to go very high up, only handfuls of meters to start. Um, and then later, if the, once they get the handling of the helicopter and everything worked out, maybe they'll take some more risks. Perseverance herself has found it the first science target. It was named after the Navajo word for Mars, Maaz, I believe is how you say that, um, although I apologies, uh, my Navajo is not so good, but I find it wonderful that we're honoring other heritages, other cultures that have celebrated astronomy and the, the planet Mars in our skies. So we have gotten our first close-up view of that target, and it looks like, I don't know, water maybe worked on this, or I don't know. I have no idea how to interpret these images yet. And that's what's exciting is these things haven't been very well interpreted by our scientists yet. The papers haven't come out. Well, here is a multiple view. We have our nav cam context view, our super cam mosaic of another target, Yigo. And you can see here another small area and our mass cam Z zoomed in and was able to see that up close. So take a look here. Here's this tiny rock in our navigation camera. Here it is, and you think, well, that's pretty good. That's a good zoom. Well, no, they're able to take this much smaller region and see very fine details, and even differences in what looks like in the minerals in that rock. So these are the capabilities these new cameras are bringing to our research on Mars. Now, interestingly enough, Curiosity has been doing some work herself over in Gale Crater and on climbing up Mount Sharp. You can see this layered structure here. This 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 rock was laid down over a very long time as Mount Sharp was built up in this crater. Well, those layers are what tell the story of the changing climate on Mars, and Curiosity is making those measurements now. Well, the climate on Mars, we might think, well, it's got to be cold. It is 1% the Earth's atmosphere, very, very thin, although there are clouds. And as you can see here in this next shot, Professor Paul Byrne made this post and stunningly put together a bunch of raw images and you see clouds floating in front of that rock in front of that layered rock i was just showing you and in fact they were caught in action as you can see here the interesting things you can see on twitter exploded actually and here's a color picture of those same clouds behind that rock now, clouds are seen from the mm. sky on Mars, and as you can see here from the trace gas orbiter that was sent to Mars, you see some clouds over on the right-hand side, but you're also seeing frost-covered sand dunes. So super, super interesting structures. The dark colors in this image are actually where the frost has sublimated away into the atmosphere and shown the dark basalt underneath. So as the frost Sub sublimates away, more and more dark lines will appear in this image. And those dark lines generally show you the direction of the wind. They run uh, perpendicular to the wind flow. So very interesting patterns in these dunes. They tell us about the Martian climate. 